Today I am really excited to review with you this printer right here, the Monoprice Delta Mini 3D printer. I've had this printer for about a month. I actually did a live stream when I unboxed and did my first test print. So you can go check that out and see what it's like directly out of the box. Over the last month, it's been a very interesting experience to get to know this printer and use it a little bit more. And I think that overall, that's probably the best word to use when describing this 3D printer, and that is interesting. This is a very interesting printer, and I will explain why. And so first, let's jump into the design and the layout on this printer. On the front of the printer is the LCD panel with the selector buttons. This side of the printer is blank, there's nothing there. You've got the spool holder that just clips on right here. And then the rear of the printer is where you have the power adapter, you have a USB port, you have this LED slash button, and you also have the slot for the micro SD card. This LED, which is also a button, serves a few purposes. It can turn on the printer's Wi-Fi, which I haven't messed with because honestly, I don't even want to begin trying to play with that. I just don't trust that on any of the cheap printers that I have. Um, I prefer to print straight from the SD card. That seems to be the most reliable way to do it. That's what I would recommend everybody does, is just print directly from the SD card and you're good to go. So if you plug this printer in, it powers on, you're supposed to be able to just push this button and it prints the first print that's on the SD card, which is what I did when I set up the printer. And so if you watch that live stream where I set it up, a lot of people kind of got upset and criticized me for like not reading the instructions and taking the time to learn. It's like, of course, normally that is something I would do. It's what I've done on any of my other printers. Even on an inexpensive printer like this, I would normally take the time to get to know it but Monoprice has been billing this as an all-in-one, out-of-the-box 3D printing solution. Like, you just push one button and it'll start printing. And I wanted to test that. And it actually worked pretty well during the live stream. But knowing what I know about some of the quirks of this printer now, I definitely don't think it's a total, total beginner's choice. So it's sort of a strange option, I guess. Especially me, I know I have a lot of print files usually on my SD card, it's not usually just the one. If you keep one print file on your SD card, it could be really quick and easy to skip over this annoying interface, pop in the card, press that button, and then it'll just start printing that file. But for me, I usually keep a few things on there, some test prints, some things that I print regularly, and so I need to navigate through and select what I want to print each time. So now it's worth mentioning, this is the first Delta style 3D printer that I've used, the first one that I've owned. And so it's been you know, a bit of a learning curve for me to kind of understand how it works and how to set it up. But I wanna run through with you the pros and the cons that I've discovered about the Monoprice Delta Mini over the month that I've had it. So let's start with the pros, with the good stuff. The best thing about this 3D printer by far is its price. I was able to get this directly from Monoprice for $150, which is the normal selling price on their website. That means that this is one of the cheapest 3D printer options out there right now. And really, if you're thinking about buying this printer, it's $150 regardless of any of the pros and cons that I'm gonna say in this review, it is 100% worth $150. I even did another live stream where I compared this, a print on this against the Prusa Mark II, and obviously the Prusa did outperform the Delta Mini, because it's you know an $800 to $1,000 printer, it's got the reputation of a Prusa. Uh, this is a $150 you know, new kind of odd entry into the market, but I was really impressed with the quality of the print that this produced compared to the Prusa. There was a difference, but it wasn't a huge difference, and that was pretty awesome, especially for the price. So the next pro to talk about when dealing with this printer is the build quality. The size, it's very, very small. It is called a mini. Some people criticize it because it has a very, very small build plate. It's about that big um, build surface for you to print on, but it has a mini in the name, so how can you be upset when the print size is mini? Like, it's not called the Delta Large, and then it prints this big. It's called the Delta Mini, and it prints mini, so I'm fine with that. The build quality overall is really, really nice. Most of the printer is made out of metal. The extruder motor, and the hot end are very, very similar, if not almost identical to what comes on the Select Mini. So if you've used those printers, it should look very, very familiar. Most of the frame is made out of metal. The only real plastic on this printer is the panel around the LCD display, the surface near the bed, and then the, the top panel. Those are all plastic, and the handle is plastic. And it's kind of funny that it has a handle because Monoprice's thing is like, 
portability you can 3D print from anywhere, so it's kind of like Apple in the 1980s with the original Macintosh, how they put a handle on the back, or even the original iMacs that came out in the late 90s, where it's like, you could just grab it and go anywhere. And I don't know how realistic it is to be like, yeah, I'm gonna take my 3D printer and just go, but it is kind of nice if you need to move it. If you've ever had to move 3D printers, you know it can be kind of a frustrating experience or kind of like awkward or you risk damaging something. This does make it really easy to move. And I will confess that I have taken it back and forth to work a couple of times to work on projects. And it's really nice to be able to walk like from the car to the building with, you know, the printer just in a handle and I'm not awkwardly carrying it. So it's goofy as it kind of seems to have a handle on top. I have found it very, very useful. So the small size, the durability, the build quality is honestly above what I would expect for $150. The next pro on my list, which might be the most important, but I'm saving it not quite as the most important, is the print quality. This thing, sometimes to get it to print, you have to kind of like finesse it a little bit, but once you get it, the quality of the prints is really, really impressive. It definitely blows away any other printer I've seen, you know, under $300. I think the print quality exceeds that of the Select Mini, which a lot of people love as a first printer or even just as a printer in general. The print quality on this is really, really nice. It also prints really fast, which I'm not used to, especially my Prusa, which I love. That's my favorite 3D printer. It prints kind of slow, even though the quality is off the charts. It takes a while to get that quality. This sucker prints fast, and you'll see if you go back and watch the live stream where I printed with it, it finishes really, really quickly, so that is definitely a huge bonus. The print quality, probably one of the things you're concerned about if you're buying a 3D printer, is exceptional with this printer. But the number one pro that I think is the most important thing, in my opinion, with this 3D printer, is that this printer is really, really fun. It's a super fun printer to use. The Delta style is actually just super fun to watch because it's just so crazy the way it moves and the way the Delta printers work. It looks like nothing you've ever seen. It almost looks totally foreign and alien and it's really, really fun to see that. It's fun to set up. It's fun to print with. It's a fun, fun printer, even with its quirks. So to spend $150 on something that's gonna give you great print quality and be fun to use, I mean, that's, for me, totally recommend that. Now. It might sound like I've been gushing over this printer a little bit because I do really like it and 100% recommend it, especially for the price. But honestly, my list of cons is longer than my list of pros. So I have found more quirks and negatives than I have positives. I just think that the positives outweigh those negatives. So let me jump into some of the issues that I've been having with this printer over the last month. The first one, which is super weird and I'm confused that I haven't heard more about it, is that this printer does not have a power switch. And that is just straight up bizarre to me. The way that you have to turn the printer on and off is to actually just plug in the AC adapter to the printer. When you plug it in, it turns it on. When you unplug it, it turns it off. I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not really a huge deal, but I find it really annoying. It would be much nicer just to have a switch you flip and the printer's turned on, especially if you have stuff set up where it's kind of wired a little more permanently sort of annoying to have to constantly unplug and plug in. So right now you might notice that there's part of a print here. Originally I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to have this printer printing while I'm talking and reviewing it. But one thing about this printer is that it is very, very loud. It's not really a big deal if you just have printers going and you're in an environment where you can do that sort of thing. But if I were to have this printer printing while I'm talking, it'd be so hard to hear what I'm saying because it's exceptionally loud. So for the sake of this review, I had to leave the printer unplugged and turned off so that you could actually hear my voice. Another con on my list is the menu navigation. I actually really like the design and the layout of the menus. They're very clear, they're very simple. The first most frustrating thing is that this screen, when it turns on, looks so much like a touch screen. I keep, I know it's not a touch screen and I keep touching it because I think that it's going to do something. It has these three buttons on the side. The middle button is to select and the top and bottom buttons are to go forwards and backwards. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually not a big deal, but it's sort of awkward and it's not what I would call intuitive at all. So menu navigation is really annoying. Another issue I've had with this printer is the heating time. For the most part, I found that it actually takes quite a while to get up to temperature, especially the bed. Sometimes though, the hot end will jump up to heat super fast and it makes me kind of wonder what's going on inside the printer that it's not super consistent. Whether it's fast or slow, I feel like it should at least be consistent and this sort of seems to be all over the place. 
Also, if you're monitoring a print, you'll see the print temperature jump up and down all over the place. It kind of stays within maybe five degrees of your target setting. It almost seems like it's struggling to maintain the temperature. Even though I mentioned that the build quality was fantastic on this printer, and I actually talked about the fact that I like the handle on top, the handle itself is one of the few plastic components that's on the printer, and it doesn't really feel super, super strong. I feel like if this is something that you are actually moving pretty regularly, like, Maybe you do a lot of demonstrations or exhibits and so you're constantly setting up like a booth or a table somewhere and you have your printer constantly traveling around in and out of cars. I feel like this would be one of the first things to break. It definitely has some flex to it. It doesn't feel super strong. It doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And finally, the last negative that I have found so far with this printer has to do with the Z axis. And this is an issue that I've seen in a few Facebook groups and message boards. But what often happens is when the printer starts, it will just jam the print head really hard into the bed and that first layer is gonna be way too thin. The way around that is to go into your print settings, into your G-code settings through whatever slicer you're using and adjust the G29 setting, which is the Z axis height. And that just kind of takes some experimentation. I've had to take that down quite a bit, but I still don't have it dialed in perfectly. And it doesn't even seem consistent really from one print to the next. You have your setting, it's giving you one result. You do a next print with the same settings and the results aren't exactly the same. So the consistency with this printer is something that could probably be improved because I tend to struggle with it a bit myself. And so that pretty much wraps up this review of the Monoprice Delta Mini. Like I mentioned before, for the price, for the fun that you get out of the printer and the quality of the prints, I absolutely do recommend this printer. This is not a paid review or an endorsement. I bought it from Monoprice at full price. Uh, but I highly recommend it as long as it's not your first 3D printer. I am very worried that if someone gets this as their first printer, it's going to be just confusing enough and just quirky enough that it might drive them away from the hobby instead of encouraging them to continue on in the hobby. Of course, when it comes to 3D printing, learning to tinker and adjust and modify things is part of it. It's part of the hobby. That's part of the fun. But when you're just starting out, there's only so much of that that you probably want to do or are even capable of doing. And so I would stick with something like the Monoprice Select Mini as a very first 3D printer and jump into this as like a second or third printer when you've got a little more experience and knowledge and you're just kind of curious about something that's a different style. But what I love is that Monoprice is willing to find these printer designs and these styles and to do things that are interesting in the 3D printing market where they sell pretty high quality printers at low prices that have unique feature sets. So like a heated bed at $150 on a Delta printer is really unique to me. So that about wraps it up. As time goes on and I get more and more familiar with this very interesting printer, I might update this review or add to it. In the meantime, please feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so so that way you get new videos and live streams every single week. Make sure to hit the like button and I will see you guys next time.